Sponsored by Squarespace. Born in rural northeast Thailand, he grew up watching classic Hong Kong action movies by Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee. It was powerful for me to watch, he said. What they did was so beautiful, so heroic. I wanted to do it too. So at 10 years old, he began studying Muay Thai and became a stunt double at age 15. That was the humble beginning of Tong Ni Jia, a stunt man whom the producer thought was ugly and couldn't act. A young man with dark skin in an industry that prefers pale complexions. Through over a decade of hard work fighting to get his movie made, at age 27, he was more than ready for his first lead role. So when it was time for him to kick, he gave the best kick ever. Tony Ja became a sensation. It is no exaggeration to say that this kick sends shockwaves around the globe. Gone were the days of fanciful kung fu. Many film industries began imitating jazz style. Fast, fierce, realistic in form and feel. Malaysia made Kinta 1881, the first martial arts film in the country. Vietnam made The Rebel, the highest grossing film in Vietnam at the time. And Indonesia made Marantau, which paved the way for The Raid. Even the John Wick series owes much of its identity to Tony Jaa. This is why I find it utterly shocking that on YouTube, there are no video essays on Jaa's work. What the hell? Today, let's skip his films that long overdue respect and take a closer look. Let's see how Tony Jaa changed action cinema. It was 2003 and a humble Thai movie was about to change the world. The story of Ong Bak is simple. In a small village, someone steals the head of a Buddha statue. A young man trained in Moi Borlan volunteers to bring it back, only to find himself face to face against a crime syndicate and must reluctantly fight his way out. Made with a budget of only 1 million US dollar, this indie hit managed to punch way above its weight class. From a tuk-tuk chase to a treetop race. And even these long take conversation scenes, director Pratya Pinkal managed to create a film that feels both indie and local, which makes the film very attractive to a foreign audience. Great directorial choices. But what truly sets this film apart is, of course, the action performed by Tony Jaa and choreographed by his mentor, Vanadi Tiknai. is revolutionary on three main points. Number one, the removal of rhythm. Kung Fu cinema is a continuation of the Beijing opera. It is fundamentally a musical performance. Long continuous fights are made possible thanks to both fighters following a musical rhythm. However, this rhythm is also a subconscious reminder to the audience that each move is designed. It's a dance. To an audience accustomed to that, Ombak feels entirely different. Fighters poke and stop, kind of like a samurai movie or a fencing match. It feels volatile and spontaneous. A quick look at the films made immediately after Ombak, and you can see how the rhythm is no longer stable. No, this part is not improvised. Number two, the aggressive intent. Tony Jaa's movement is truly explosive. You can feel that every move can do damage, even the ones that don't connect, making the fights feel dangerous to not only the characters, but the actors too. Compare that to a lot of Kung Fu movies where the fluidity of the form is valued, the moves are fast, but they don't necessarily feel risky. Like if you get slapped in the face, it hurts, but not that much. There are a lot of in-betweens, dressings. After Ong Bak, however, this kind of dressing is largely gone from Hong Kong cinema. 
even in movies with more traditional movements, the attacks became way more direct. Number 3. Full Contact This movie is full of slow motion finishers, and because it's slow, it becomes very difficult to fake a hit. So the filmmakers have to find creative ways to hide pads on the actors, which explains the wigs and beanies. Additionally, Tony Jaa's accuracy is also impressive, using his thigh instead of his knee, using his upper arm instead of his elbow. Even then, it demands a lot of trust from the stunt performers, all for the sake of a more visceral and realistic experience. While Donnie Yen is infamous for making contact in film, his pursuit of realistic style was never that popular until Ong Bak made it popular. Because of all these stylistic choices, Ong Bak offered a fresh experience to action fans, and it became a new benchmark of which every martial arts movie will be measured against. And this is just Josh's first outing. If you want to make an impact on the world, a good way to do it is to make a website using Squarespace. Be it an event, a non-profit, a movement, or just a local business, a website can make everything feel professional. It doesn't matter which type of website you need, you can find a template to help you get started. Need some inspiration? Check out Made with Squarespace under the resource section. Or you can go to the help center and find detailed video tutorials. Squarespace made it easy for anyone and everyone to achieve professional results. And the best part? You can try it out for free, no credit cards needed. Start a free trial at squarespace.com slash cinema. use the code AXANTHECINEMA and you can get 10% off your first purchase. So why not check out Squarespace and put your words out there. In 2005, the Trinity of Star, director and choreographer would reunite and release another martial arts classic, Tom Yum Gong. The 5 million US dollar budget may be only a modest increase, but what the team managed to get out of it was a massive improvement in cinematic quality. If Ong Bak is a benchmark, this is the peak that few will ever reach. The premise of Tom Yum Gong is almost identical to Ong Bak. But instead of the head of a Buddha statue, it is two elephants that got stolen. Jia's character is a bit more fleshed out, but every other character is less interesting. Not that it matters anyway, you are here to watch Jia kick some ass. The most iconic part of Tong Yam Gong is, without a doubt, the numerous long takes. These complex wonders require impeccable coordination. Clearly, the trio isn't content with just showing off Tony Jaa. They want the film to be more than a one-man show. Long takes in martial arts movies are rare. It is physically demanding, and in situations as unpredictable as stunt performance, it is difficult to achieve good results. The 13-second long take in Ip Man 3 was already impressive, yet here is Tony Jaa doing it for 4 minutes straight. Sure, the exchange is fairly simple, but the scuffle remains dirty, brutal, and spontaneous. The spirit of his style is preserved. Towards the end, you can see Tony Jaa getting tired, and that also helps the fight feel more grounded too. Along with many incredible stunt performers, this is the most stunning wonder in the history of action, unparalleled to this day. Of course, this movie has more than just wonders. Watch this fight and how the camera is positioned. Compare this to a similar fight in Fist of Legend. It feels different, doesn't it? Hong Kong action films generally prefer to punch in for big actions, enhancing the drama. Tom Yam Gong, on the other hand, cuts to a Y. There's a much greater emphasis on body movement on little of dynamic angles. From this angle, it feels like you're really there watching a real fight. This makes the camera feel even more invisible, the intensity came straight from the actor's movement. This neutral angle would be emulated by later films too. There are many more reasons to love this movie. The many, many stunts that rival the works of Jackie Chan, 
a beautifully filmed capoeira fight with shallow water enhances the visual of every move. The incredible parkour action, which Ongbak also has many, these elements would find a way into other movies, but no one does it quite like Tony Ja, not to the same level, not to the same frequency. From the 2010s onward, Tony Ja's career entered a bit of an awkward phase. Ja's personal career continues to grow. He begins appearing in Hollywood films, kicking ass as always. China also loves him. He gets to flex his acting chop in SPL2, as well as showing off his funny side in Detective Chinatown 3. However, none of his works make much of an impact. On Back 2 and 3 were Ja's first directorial efforts. While they have some decent actions, they are primarily historical epics. The creative trio returns for Tong Yang Gong 2, and reviews were also mixed on it. Indeed, that ship has sailed. The camera work, the explosivity, the brutality, and the realism, every aspect of his early work has become mainstream. Will Tony Jaa make another breakthrough? Time will tell, but I have another equally exciting thought. Just as he was inspired by the works of Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, his work will have inspired the next big thing to come. It has been 20 years since Ong Bak came out, the kid who watched it is now an adult. Any second now, we may see a new star rising. Now that's exciting.